This video provides an example of how teachers can use oral prompts and written scaffolds to help students fully articulate their initial ideas about a specific science phenomenon. Tasks, talk, and tools play a critical role throughout this lesson. As you watch, observe what kinds of tasks students are engaged in to make their thinking visible. What tools help students communicate their ideas? And how does the teacher use talk to make students' ideas public? At the beginning of a new science unit, the teacher wanted students to share their initial ideas. The guiding question provided in the curriculum broadly asked students, what do you know about electricity? This would result in a laundry list of disconnected ideas. This would not be useful in having students reason about science ideas. To have a focused discussion about student circuit ideas, which was the heart of the unit, the teacher asked targeted questions specifically about an everyday flashlight. What causes a flashlight to stop working after being left on for 30 days? The teacher engages students in an observational task. Students make observations about how a battery, wire, and bulb can be positioned to create circuits. These observations will help them later in, in hypothesizing about how a flashlight circuit works. We're going to give you guys some light bulbs, like the one that's kind of in there, some batteries, kind of like that one and some wires, which in this case, there's like a metal strip in here, but you guys will get a piece of metal instead. And try to figure out which ways make a light bulb turn on and which ways don't. And there, we're gonna give you space in your notebook just to write down four, to draw four ways that work and four different ways that don't work. But I think there's a lot of ways that work and don't Students work. manipulated the materials to create different circuits and recorded their observations in their notebooks using drawings and labels. In the next clip, the teacher has students share their observations with the class first before pressing students to think more deeply about how they think a circuit works. The teacher uses particular talk moves to help students clarify their descriptions and talk with each other about observations. Is that a way that worked or did not work? I think it worked. You think it worked? It worked. Okay. It makes well, it lighter. How is that one connected? Can you talk about it? So I, I put that one. The What's that? The battery? Yeah, the okay. minus and then I placed it to positive and then the light. Where's the light bulb in your picture? There. Is that the circle? Yes. So you have two batteries? Yes. Were the batteries touching? No, we're touching. I'm skeptical. Does anyone think that that way would work? If the batteries are not touching. Or if you think it would work? Mm, are we divided? Are we confused? What do you, okay, remind me of your name? Julia, Julia, what do you think? Do you think his way would work? Hold on. Listen, are you listening to how she's thinking about it? Yeah. Listen. Between the batteries and the wires, Oh, so now you think it doesn't work? I didn't know it wasn't, wasn't working. I just set it up to because... You want to see? Yeah. So what could you add to your picture that you think would make it work better? Well, like if you put this one on the top of that, it would work. So they're touching? Yeah. What's another way that you could make them? Because it seems like from what Julia was saying, that there has to be some way for the energy to get there. Right? Is that that's what I was hearing her say. What's another way? You can put the other one is up, down, and you'll push them together. So they have to touch? You push them together so they touch? The bottom part has to touch. What if you took another wire? Could you add another wire? Um, I did that. You did that? Three batteries. I connected two wires together. And then I, I placed the other one behind the other side and then placed it on the other side. Okay. And then I realized that the more batteries, the more brighter it gets. Oh. That might be why our flashlight over here has two batteries in it instead of one, so we can see better. Thank you. After having a few students share their observations and take questions from their peers, the teacher had students help her create a public record of four functioning circuits to hang as a reference in the room. The next day, students worked on individual models to express their ideas about how they think a flashlight circuit works and what might happen if it were left on for 30 days. The teacher provided them with a blank writing scaffold and told them they could cross out, add, and change anything on the page to help them communicate their ideas. 
In this next clip, notice how many ideas this student is using to make sense of the circuit and how he pulls in his background experiences to make sense of the phenomenon. The battery has like the energy stored inside it. After like all the energy is stored inside of the battery, that's what you need to set this off. And then when you have inside of the battery, there's like, I noticed that to light it up, there's like a wire that's touching other wires that lights up. And like the wires are going inside like this little bubble that looks like a water bubble, but like it's hard on the outside, but like watery in the inside, like a pomegranate. So I think without the uh, wires inside of there, it wouldn't be able to light up because nothing is touching the water to set it off. And it would like uh, electricity gets wet, like a, a plug that has electricity in it, when it gets wet, it starts fire. So I think that the other wire is causing it to not cause fire, just get like a little hot heating it. And that would mean that's what gives us the light. Yeah, so it's like a little bit of fire mixed with heat. Okay. Say yo. It's water bubbles yeah. like so small. Like I think I think if you overuse the light bulb too much, like the water the like the heat in there like forces it to heats it for the water thing to go off. These students marshaled observations from their circuit task and their own life experiences to make sense of the flashlight circuit and what might cause it to stop working. This video is only a small sample of the kind of talk that happened throughout the classroom during this lesson. The teacher visited each table group and listened in on student thinking. As she listened in, she noted what ideas students had and where they fit within the unit plan. For example, the ideas these boys shared fit within the larger standards of the unit. Energy inside the battery gets at the energy source and were useful in subsequent lessons where students learned about chemical energy and made their own batteries. Other ideas reference system standards. The boys had some understanding that some materials carry current and others do not. Finally, they referenced the idea that energy from the battery can transform into heat and light. His ideas contained partial understandings and some alternative conceptions which were revisited throughout the unit. Let's revisit the tips about the kinds of talk, task, and tools that help students make their ideas public. Instead of using the broad question, what do you know about electricity? This lesson focuses in on a more manageable question about a flashlight circuit to anchor the discussion of ideas that were carried throughout the unit. Recording and sharing observations provided students a starting point from which they began hypothesizing about the unobservable mechanisms that make a circuit work. These observations led directly into using a model scaffold to elicit students' thinking. Without a scaffold, students often get stuck staring at a blank page or may not focus in on the target question. By providing students with a starting place for a diagram in writing, they have some guidance and can jump right in to getting their ideas on paper. Briefly, let's unpack the important parts of this writing scaffold. First, it directly relates to an observable activity students were engaged with. Next, there is space for both drawing and writing. Lines cue students that writing is expected. Also, drawings that are partially started allow students to spend time thinking and writing rather than laboring over drawing the perfect light bulb, for example. Finally, setting up a before and after scenario gives students a contrast and cause and effect relationship to consider. In this case, students considered a working flashlight before being left on and then after it was turned on for 30 days and no longer functioned. They had to consider what caused the damage and how they think it happened. The ideas students inscribed and shared gave insight into their thinking, which is a valuable planning tool. Based on the student models in the circuit unit, many students were puzzled about what was going on inside the battery and had a range of hypotheses. So the teacher followed this lesson by diving into battery systems and using corresponding lessons from the curriculum to help students make sense of this part of the circuit system.